So what exactly is a histogram? And why is it so important for digital photography? According to Wikipedia, a histogram is a graphical display of tabulated frequencies, shown as bars, that represent the proportion of data falling into several categories. Or, translated for photographers, a histogram is a graphical display of the different tonalities in your photograph. In other words, a histogram is a digital light meter for your camera. To truly understand histograms, we need to take a step back and talk about some basic principles of digital imaging. One of the first problems that had to be solved back when digital imaging was being invented was how many levels of gray it would take to fool the eye into seeing a continuous tone image without any steps or breaks along the way. What researchers discovered was to recreate a continuous tone black and white image, 255 different shades of gray were needed to fool the eye into thinking there was in fact an infinite number of shades of gray in the image. Black was given a value of 0 and white was given a value of 255. Middle gray was given a value of 128. These values make up the horizontal axis of the histogram. Black without detail, or pure black, is located on the left-hand side of the horizontal axis of the histogram. And pure white is located on the right-hand side of the horizontal axis of the histogram. For a black and white photograph, this translates to the following values for photography. The left-hand side of your graph represents how much shadow detail or lack of shadow detail you have. The right-hand side of your graph represents how much highlight detail or lack of highlight detail you have. And the middle of your graph represents your midtone values. But what about the vertical axis of the graph? What do those values represent? The vertical axis of the graph tells you how high or low a concentration of black, white, or middle gray tonalities you have at any given range. In the histogram on your screen, I would be able to determine that the image this histogram is representing does not have many dark areas in it, that it has quite a few middle gray areas, and it has one very bright area in it. Let's take a look at an actual example. Here you see a properly exposed image. Note how there's a bit of space on either side of the histogram. This space indicates that I'm neither under or overexposing the frame. Now let's take a look at an underexposed image. Notice how the histogram is piled up all the way on the left hand side of the graph and the vertical axis extends all the way to the top of the graph. This is called clipping your shadows and it's a telltale sign that you have incorrectly exposed your image in your camera. The spike on the left hand side of the histogram indicates loss of shadow detail in your image. In other words, when you try to print the image, there will be black without detail in the dark areas of your frame. I've drawn a red arrow to show you the exact area of the image that would print black without detail and how that relates to the histogram on the right. Now let's take a look at an overexposed image. Notice how the histogram is piled up all the way on the right hand side of the graph and the vertical axis extends all the way to the top of the graph. This is called clipping your highlights and is also a telltale sign that you've incorrectly exposed the image in your camera. The spike on the right hand side of the histogram indicates loss of highlight detail in your image. In other words, when you try to print the image, there will be areas of white without detail in the light areas of the frame. What this translates to for desktop photo printers is that zero ink will be put down in the light areas of the image, resulting in very noticeable changes in reflectivity on the surface of your print in the areas where there's no ink. It just looks strange and you want to avoid it. I've drawn a red arrow to show you the exact area of the image that would print white without detail and how that relates to the histogram on the right. So how does this knowledge translate into exposing the images in your camera correctly? Well, the rule is pretty simple. You want to expose your image in a way that the histogram falls in the middle of the graph without clipping your shadow or your highlight information. But there are a couple things that you should know. The first is about digital noise and grain. The majority of digital visual noise and grain, that is the unwanted color specs and the film type graininess that you don't want in your image, live on the left hand side of the histogram in your shadow areas. Thus, if you're intentionally underexposing your images to avoid clipping your highlights, you're actually decreasing the quality of your image by increasing the grain and visual noise in that image. A little known fact about digital cameras 
is that over two-thirds of the image data your camera is capable of capturing is located in this portion of the histogram. So it logically follows that you want to expose your images to get as much data here as you can without clipping your highlights. Now there are many different ways to adjust your exposure to accomplish this, and to talk about them is really beyond the range of this lesson. However, I will briefly touch on one of the simplest ways to adjust your exposure to get your histogram to fall within the box without clipping your shadows or your highlights. This method works on most cameras in the following three modes, program, aperture priority, and shutter priority. Let's say you take a picture and the histogram looks like this. Now, according to the rules, you haven't clicked your shadows or your highlights. But the problem with the above histogram is that the majority of your image data is falling in the area most likely to have visual noise and grain. Thus, if you needed to brighten the image up after the fact in Photoshop, you would essentially be enhancing or bringing out the visual noise and grain in the image. What you want to do is expose in your camera to bring the histogram from something like you see to something like this. Again, we're playing within the rules. Neither of the endpoints of the histogram are clipping, but in the second exposure, all of the shadow grain and visual noise will be much less apparent because the image was exposed properly in camera, maximizing image quality. If you're shooting in program, aperture priority, or shutter priority modes in your camera, a very easy way to make this shift in exposure is with the EV button. The EV button is located on different parts of different cameras, but almost always looks the same no matter what brand of camera you're shooting. It has a button with a little plus and minus sign on it. The way you would use this button to affect the histogram is fairly straightforward. If your histogram is piled up on the left-hand side of the graph, you need to add light to your picture. To add light to your picture using the EV button, simply hold it down and toggle the scroll wheel on your camera to bring the camera's meter to a positive setting, as you see on the screen. Take another shot of the same frame, preview the histogram, and you'll see if you'll need to make any further adjustments with the EV dial. Now, if you take a test shot and the histogram is piled up on the far right-hand side of the graph, indicating clipped highlight values, simply hold down the EV dial and bring the camera's meter to a minus setting and retake the shot. Now, one word of warning on this technique. When you're done making your images, when you're done in that specific lighting situation where you had to make the exposure adjustment with the EV button, be sure to return the camera's meter to the zero position. I must say from personal experience, there have been a number of times I've inadvertently left the EV exposure compensation on to my great regret. One more thing you should know about histograms. There are actually two types of histograms. One is the RGB histogram and one is known as the luminosity histogram. The RGB histogram gives you a channel by channel readout of the specific color values in your photograph. It's an advanced way of reading your image's exposure. The luminosity histogram is essentially an average of the RGB histogram's values, as you see in this illustration. The gray area of the RGB histogram on top represents the average or luminosity histogram that you see on the bottom. Now, if you're new to histograms, I'd recommend beginning by setting your camera to the luminosity or average histogram mode. So why would you want to eventually consider setting your camera to the RGB histogram mode? Well, in one word, control. When the camera is set to the RGB histogram mode, you have a much better idea if a single channel is going to get clipped. If a channel gets clipped, that usually translates into an image with an overly saturated set of colors in that specific channel. In the above example, you can see that my blue channel is getting very close to clipping in the highlight area compared to the luminosity histogram to the left of it. If I were to have my camera set only to the luminosity histogram mode, I would have missed how close my camera was to clipping that blue channel. What's most important is to be aware of what type of histogram your camera uses, so that you'll understand precisely what the data is saying. Music